All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you how I make soccer balls, and this is a little bit different than other tutorials, so you're going to learn a little bit in this one. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated, but it, in my opinion, it gives you a little bit of a better result. So uh, let's just get started. We're going to go to File, New, in General. Now, keep in mind, if you're completely new, Blender, this isn't the tutorial for you. I did make an introduction on how to use it, um, so you may want to do that. I'm going to start by deleting the default cube and go into uh, Shift-A, create icosphere now we're going to expand the panel down here drop the subdivisions by one this creates 12 vertices basically this is the amount you need to create a soccer ball so we're going to go into edit mode once you're in edit mode you can press Control b and then v and you can bevel out like so just click anywhere don't worry about the size right now because we got to change it from offset to percent change it to 33.3 as many threes as you want that's up to you uh what that allows or what that does anyways is basically if we select the whole thing uh, let's go to um this little drop down panel there's edge length it's going to create even sides so 0.35 on each side right and that's what we want now there's two shapes here there's pentagons and there's hexagons okay so that's what makes up a soccer ball it's actually really simple um Let's turn that off because that's going to get in the way here. So turn edge length off. Now, select the whole thing, control B, we're going to bevel. And all we want to do is bevel up once. That's it. Okay, so control B, mouse wheel up, click. And you want to make sure you have this little shape in the middle. Okay, this little area. Now, um, in, if you're like me, you just unselected everything, uh, that's probably bad. Otherwise, you want to make sure you have all of those still selected. But if you don't, select this shape like so. Go Shift G, select by area. And now you can select all the way around the model, just like that. We're going to press Shift H, hide everything. What this does is it allows these edges here to act like they're, um, they're open borders, basically. And so now we can actually use select more or less. So control number pad plus, control number pad minus. I assign these, but you know, you can do that by right clicking and I assign it to my mouse. So change shortcut, right? So I just use my mouse to do a select less. And what that's going to end up doing is selecting that single edge. If it doesn't select the edge, it means you weren't in uh, using the edge selection here. So press two, enter edge selection, and then select less that's what you're going to do uh, once you've done this you can just simply go over to object data properties here um, there's vertex groups now, i'm not sure if you have to switch to vertex for this to work but i am so press one click the plus sign you'll see that it creates a new vertex group here but there's nothing in it so we got to assign these vertices to the group once we've done that we're good to go we can press alt h get out of there all right, go into object mode real quick. Go to your modifier panel. We're going to subdivide this mesh real quick, just once. That's all we need. We're going to press uh, Control A here and apply it. So it is somewhat destructive. But what you're going to notice is that once you apply that subdivision surface, um, all of these are quads. There's no triangles in this model no more. So uh, we do have a quad mesh at this point. And we're going to use it just as it is. We're not going to change anything. Um, but I do want to go back into here. You can see we still have this selected, which is nice. But let's say you didn't. Uh, you select your group, click select, and it'll end up looking like this now. Here's the trick with this. Um, basically, you're going to mouse button down one again so that you're back at that. Press Control i Okay. Now it'll invert that, and you can remove everything else. You don't need it on there. You just want that, that one little edge. So if we were to press select again, we have that same selection available. Cool. Now let's go to object, uh, the modifier panel again. Modifier panel, all we're going to do is apply um, cast. This is where things really differ from my video, from other videos. So normally, I'm going to create something real quick just to demonstrate. I'm going to do a cube. Uh, when you create a cube and you subdivide it, you can create a quad sphere. Um, but 
when you apply a cast to it, it turns it into the quad sphere. It actually makes it more of a uh, a sphere. You can see the slight difference here as it changes shape, right? Turn it on and off. Okay. So when you're modifying the factor for quad sphere, and the mesh is not uh, like a perfect perfect object, usually it pushes in and out like so. Um, a lot of other tutorials are going to tell you to change this factor value. Don't. It's not. It's not going to help you. Um, just keep that in mind. The trick about it is, is at 0.5, it works best to create a sphere always. So what you need to do is create a cast and you're going to create another cast and another cast and another cast until this object starts to take the shape of the most perfect it can get sphere, right? It's not going to become perfect by the way. So just keep that in mind. It's, it's just going to progressively refine but it feels like it never becomes perfect so you can add a lot of these and then you can apply these just by hitting Control a real fast as you hover over it so make sure you're in object mode you can do that or you can just right click your object and uh, convert to mesh boom and that's it and you can see if i apply another cast it still slightly nudges it right so you can do like 30 of these if you want it doesn't really matter but uh, just till it's good enough all right, so now we're pretty much good to go. What we're going to do is we're going to apply a, um, oh, before we do this, actually, let's go into edit mode. This little ring that we wanted, right, select it. Uh, we're going to push it in like so. Okay. And pushing it in like this, the way, the way we've done it is just slightly different right here in the center. Right. Instead of having an edge draw from right there up, we now have a quad here instead. Okay, so it's going to actually deliver a little bit better of a result on this object. And um, so we push that in for a little bit, just scale it. it because it's symmetrical, you can scale it all in. It all goes to the center. Um, what we're going to do now is apply the subdivision surface. Right. And you can see what kind of result we're getting. You can go crazy with the depth on this a little bit. Like you can push it in pretty far and it's not really going to matter. Um, it will to a certain extent if you go too far, but it, what this is allowing you to do more or less um, specifically, let's start back over real quick, is, you know, you can turn proportional editing on with this and you can mouse wheel up you can bring it in like so. And so you can bring these edges down with it a little bit. And now when you subdivide it, you'll see the difference here. You get this kind of a shape, which is really cool. Maybe, maybe if you're making like blackberries or something like that, I don't know. But you can control the fall off basically at this point. Uh, so I don't really want that. So we're going to go ahead. I'm going to apply the subdivision surface. I'm going to turn this into um, on cage here. So we see the end result. And I'm going to press S, shift it in, and I'm going to use my mouse wheel to adjust that fall off curve a little bit. And I want it to have a little bit of an effect on that corner, but not much. Just a tiny bit, right? And so once that's done, um, Basically, you applied the subdivision. You can bump it up in value. You can set it at three or whatever. So we're at 100,000 faces. Uh, we can apply cast at this point. And we might want to apply a couple of these again. And this is the result we end up with. All right. If you ever want to change how deep this groove is, you can always go back and just scale it in a little bit more. All right. And sometimes you can get pretty crazy with it, so you can do that number, right? Uh, turn proportional editing off, just so you don't accidentally keep using it, but this is the kind of result we get, right? Um, in this situation, we're going to go to a side view real quick. We're going to check it. 
sometimes it can still be a little bit bumpy, but right now it seems pretty good. Okay, it's, and if you wanted to make it a little bit smoother, you just um, bump up the subdivision a bit or apply more casts, something like that, and uh, you'll get some pretty stellar results. So 400,000 face uh, soccer ball, not useful in games. There's ways to break this down, and I'll show you that here in a moment. But uh, we're going to shade this smooth. So right-click on it, shade it smooth. Um, we're going to go into edit mode. And I'm going to select one of the pentagons, the center vertex here. We're going to press Shift-G and amount of adjacent faces. Okay, and it selects that single vertex in every pentagon. All right, so keep that in mind. And we can actually uh, grow selection from here. Sometimes it can be hard to see down in this little crevice. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you might want to do this before you actually start pushing the, uh, the mesh in. But uh, in our case, we could tell we stopped right there. We didn't go over one. So that's good. Now we're going to go to the material panel. We're going to click the plus sign. Create new. And it's going to create a white material. We're going to click the plus sign. Create new. We'll change the base color down to black. And now we're going to click assign. And voila, we are there. That's a soccer ball. Uh, if we hit the little material preview, you can see right here, it looks like so. Uh, personally, I just bump the roughness down. I think it looks a little bit nicer. And I'll do that for both um, the black and the white. And I make them a little tiny bit different with the roughness values. Just, just a little nuance, I guess. Uh, if you want to show this off to your friends, remember EV, you can turn on ambient occlusion, bump it up to something like, say, 5 or maybe even 25. Depends on how aggressive you want to be um, and that will be that right there so we now know how to make a soccer ball quick easy and fast so let's go ahead and duplicate it by pressing shift d we're going to hide the original so we don't mess with it uh, we're going to go back to solid view uh, you can sculpt on this but you have to break it down so we're going to right click convert to mesh okay and so we can take this mesh now, and we're going to go into Sculpt Mode. And I'm going to use Draw Sharp for this, but I'm going to push down these kind of edges here a little bit. Uh, there's a ton of different things you can do. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to this Alpha. So I'm using Alpha's Manager here. It's the link. There's a link in the description. But um, And I'm going to change it to Area Plane, and I'm going to rake it. Okay. The stroke here, I'm going to change. Let's try 30 first. I don't know what I need, but we'll try 30 for spacing. And that should do it. Now, if I press F, I can make this bigger or smaller. I'm just going to try to line it up about the size I want. And let's give it a test. I'm using a tablet here, so my strength changes with the pressure of my pen. Um, and I can draw down like so. So that's a little too strong, first of all. I want to create this illusion that there's um, like that kind of mesh ripple in it going down here, right? Now I'm only at 400 uh, faces. This isn't an optimized mesh for sculpting, really. But keep in mind, you can create you can create a soccer ball like with quads and model it all by hand and control the topologies like super detailed. Uh, it's not fun, but it pretty much is the same process as this. Except you're going to do a lot of like manual editing for the uh, topology. And so that would give you better sculpting results. On the other hand, just doing a quick remesh for this would probably work pretty good. All right. But what we're going to do is we're going to just uh, simply knock in some lines like this real quick. Here's a trick that I didn't mention earlier. This object is only symmetrical on one axis. Okay. So just kind of pay attention to what axis you're rolling around. Right now it's on Z. Um, let's do Y. Okay, that's not it. That's obviously not symmetrical. Let's try X. So you can see here X is in fact symmetrical. All right, so let's turn on X right here, not Y, X. And when we do this, <clears throat> hmm. All right, so yeah, it should be doing it on the other side. So let's zoom in a little, knock in some little 
kind of shapes here. Should have done it on the exact other side and been right. And it's not, so it's not X. So I guess it's Y. Okay. Let's try it right here. So this obviously is symmetrical, right? Over here. Over here. Yeah. All right, so we're good now. It's Y. My bad. We can go in, create these kind of shapes super quick. Now, um, you can use spacing or you could use lines. We're going to do lines because I'm in a rush and I want pretty clean lines. So, And try not to move in and out when you do this. Just go through, get the things you want done, done. Now, you could do kind of like this little ripple effect, maybe make it a little less dramatic. Um, add some little dots so that it looks like a place where the uh, stitching is. And then you can actually add stitching as well. I wouldn't sculpt it personally. I probably would just model it and just lay it in here in all kinds of crazy ways. If you're going for some kind of super high detail model, that's probably the best way to go about it. So, and uh, don't forget to rotate your view and try to line up so that you're looking down the center there. Because that can be pretty important. And this should only take just a moment. But at this point, you're pretty much good to go as far as modeling this thing uh, and making it look however you want. Now, when I'm recording, I don't push my faces up as high as they should go. Um, so I can take this system up to 15 million, and it does pretty well. Not perfect. I can get to a little bit higher in ZBrush, so about 20 million in ZBrush and um, 20 million in Mudbox, actually. So Blender does lag a little bit behind other sculpting programs. Keep that in mind. It's not, uh, it, it does pretty good, but it's not, it's not those programs. Uh, in my opinion, it's actually better than Mudbox now. So even though Mudbox does a little bit better on performance, it doesn't have the tools. It just doesn't have them. Which is a real shame because you got to pay as, a lot of money for that. Just about as much as uh, Photoshop. Actually, I think it's the same as Photoshop. So, um, what we're going to get into after this is I'm just going to let you see the result with it. With some stitching looking kind of stuff going on. This alpha wasn't even made for this. This isn't a stitch alpha or something like that. But you can do dots, do the laces later. Um, so once we see what it looks like finished, um, I'm going to show you how to break it down so that you can actually use this maybe in a game. I'm not going to show you how to UV map it. I mean, it's pretty easy to UV map. But... um. Actually, I, I could show you how to UV map it. It, sh it should be like one click because we defined that edge. So, yeah, at least you don't have to do the whole ball. You you just have to do um, half of it, which is nice. Because otherwise you'd be here all day trying to do all this. Make sure I got everything real quick because I, you can see I zoomed out. Now this is too big. So you got to zoom in and kind of adjust back to maybe what you were at before. I think it's too close now. Yeah, we'll let we'll let we'll let that one ride, I think. Okay, so a couple more left. It's just a few. Try to get down the center of it. There you go. There you go. All done. Just check it over real quick. It looks good to me. So, go back into object mode. And so this was um, our high poly. And basically what we were creating before was kind of like a mid poly. And you could keep working on this, adding a lot more detail to it. This is like your final touches. The um, the trick here is you can see where, it, you know, it's looking, it's looking kind of like it's got that little tension where they uh, are sewn together. But 
or stitched together. But from further away, you can see that a lot more visibly still. So you kind of exaggerate those things a little bit, and it's better for video games. So when you bake this out, it's really gonna it's really gonna be special, right? Now, um, let's go ahead and bring back the other one. This is the one you're going to create your low poly from. I'm going to actually press in, place this in the center by backspace in it. We're going to call that high poly. We'll go through the whole thing. Why not? Just to get it ready to texture. Uh, high poly. Hide it. We want the icosphere here. Call this mid poly. And this one we can duplicate. We'll hide the mid poly. We're going to create the low poly. Now, um, what you could do is you could just delete modifiers if you wanted to, if you didn't apply them yet. That's something uh, that's possible, but you're going to have that, all that pushed in. So what I would do is convert it to uh, mesh. Applies all the modifiers. And I'll go to decimate. And this is where it really gets fun, because you can unsubdivide. And because we were subdividing for most of this mesh, and it's all quads, uh, you can unsubdivide it. So usually um, iterations of two so two four eight you know all that jazz six eight you can break it back down and it should stop at eight okay so anything past that should start throwing errors so you can see there yeah we're going to go back to eight And what I'm going to do here is just simply um, apply this. So control A, apply it, get it out of the way. Now, uh, this is still 1,620 faces. So you could come in here and you could try to optimize this further uh, just manually. But it's much more manageable now, so you're not going to have a big deal. These loops here are um, something you might want to keep for like a lot zero. Um, if you're going to create like a LOD 1, this these loops probably can go off the bat here. So we're going to press Shift-G, select by length, and bump this threshold. All right, bump it down. Hold Shift while you move that, and it should work. Should work. Sometimes you have to manually enter the number there, but 0 .00001, whatever. Yeah, something like that works usually. Okay, so it looks like it got it all, so dissolve edges. There you go. It's a little bit nicer. You could probably do this one too. So we'll do another one by length. Dissolve edges. I'm digging that, I like that. So, what we're gonna do is, uh, that's 720 faces. I would personally probably leave these little creases here just a little bit. I think that's pretty nice. But um, you could just apply a cast to it. And it might make it a little bit smoother than what it is right now. But um, it should it should work out pretty well. Okay. And because we do have that selection there, we should be able to still select that. Because we didn't remove any of that. So uh, we can sh press... Um, Control E, mark seam, as those can be your UV islands. Um, it will, it won't hurt necessarily uh, if you're creating this texture in something like Substance Painter, where you can actually drag text across these areas and all that fun stuff. Um, it's going to be on you on how you approach it and whatnot. Though you may want to, you may not want to do that. You may want to make um, like a bigger patch in areas where you might have some text going across or something like that. So it's kind of up to you. Once you do that, this is ready to be unwrapped. So select it all, press U, click unwrap, you go to the UV editing tab, you'll see that it just lays in like so. Um, most efficient thing? No. But you do have the option of stacking these on top of one another. So if you have the UV toolkit add-on, it's like 20 bucks. It might be a little bit more now, I'm not sure. But um, you can do stack similar, and now you can see uh, how that works out. You can actually 
just do a number like that. So that's a really good add-on, by the way. Definitely recommend getting UV Toolkit. Because you can just pretty much use that same texture in those places if needed. And then say you had a logo section. Like I press L here, I can select my UV Island. Um, I could just press U here and unwrap. And then uh, actually kill the seams in here. Unwrap it all together as one piece, maybe. Although I don't think it, I don't think I would do that personally, but just an option. Oops. Let's try this again. I'm gonna do uh, this is the UV toolkit here, so I'm gonna do clear seam. Whoop. Control Z back. Clear seam. I want to get rid of them. Now UV toolkit has what's called border seam, which is real cool. Otherwise, you'll just have to select this yourself. Border seam does like so. Right. Select. Sometimes it won't select by UVs, so try it again. Or seams. Right. So L U unwrap. So we could definitely put a logo on this one. No problem. Alright, and that might be the biggest face you want. And so these other ones, you might not want that, but let's do a control I, press A, we're going to move those out. These aren't stacked perfectly together, so just keep that in mind. You might have some discrepancies, all right? Let's take all that. Uh oh, what did I not select? No, okay, that's fine. Control I. Which part of the model is this? What is that? Click this little button. It'll allow you to select mesh. This is right here. Why is that right there? Okay. So let's do this. Um, we're going to select this section. Press Control I. Make sure that's selected. All right. We're going to press U again. Unwrap. I'm guessing when we stacked similar. That it disables UV sync. Uh, when we stacked similar, it just got left behind. Now we have different similar parts. It's different. So we can press um, A. Yeah, something, something's just getting left behind. So press A, G, move it out. Select everything. Now what part is this? Come on now. It's that vertex, or that section of this model, of this face. It is a possibility that I'm not selecting everything right. Okay, L, move you out. Oh, you know what? What's going on here? Okay, let's move this one out. Press Control I. Select. Select all of these. Press U. Unwrap. Press A. Stack similar. There we go. Select everything. Okay, finally we got it. It's me screwing that up, I guess. Let's go ahead and move this back in. I feel like maybe... No, nah, that's not going to work. Make it just a tiny bit. Bigger. Than these right here, which we'll make, right, like so. Oh, you know what? It's a good idea to keep these the same size, so. I'm pretty sure you can do a local scale in here somehow. 
yeah, individual origins. So it doesn't keep expanding outwards. That's pretty much all that's doing. And just scale it up. This is really bad efficiency, but that's okay. We should at least have a more clear side of the ball where you could put some text or something. And now we can actually um, select all this. We're going to add with the UV toolkit here, custom UV checker. These are checkers that I have saved in my textures folder. You can load them up. So you can see how clear this text or this font reads uh, when you map it. And also check the scaling difference. You can see this is just a little bit more dense than those. And uh, that might be something you want to do if you're going to have font right here. All right, not required, but you certainly can. All right, so that is that. Let's turn that color mode off. There we go. Oh, you can also switch materials. Check this out. Right. Cool. And so now we have a low poly and a high poly. Um, we would just have to bake this out. I'll make another video on baking a little bit later on, but basically um, there's ways to do it manually using cycles and then there's um, add-ons for it as well so I have a simple bake add-on which is constantly being updated sometimes it's broken sometimes it works uh, but it's a good add-on it's actually got a lot of options in here for you it does a lot of different cool things create including like creating atlases baking from one UV to the other UV you could do that manually but it takes some time to set up and I still got to make a video about that as well. So, um, nonetheless, that is making a soccer ball in a nutshell. I didn't think I would go all the way through with the, the prep of everything, but you know, if you're going to go to Substance Painter, you can just export your high poly and export your low poly as FBX files, um, and you should be able to bake them in Substance pretty easily, no problem. And of course, keep working on your high poly if you want, adding stitching and all that. All right. So thanks for watching the video. I hope you um, learned a little bit in this one. I know it's run on a little bit longer than I probably or you probably wanted, but you know, compared to other little soccer ball tutorials, I mean, it's not too bad. It includes everything pretty much. So I uh, hope you enjoyed. If you did. Like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, leave some comments below anything you want, might want to see in the future when it comes to modeling, texturing, and that other fun stuff. So, But once again, thanks for watching, and I'll check you out next time. All right, take care.